Hey folks, welcome to our channel. Family friendly bushcraft. If you want to see different content, put it in the comments below. Click that like button, hit subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. So today we're going to be making some birch bark tar. As you can see, we're using an old bean tin. We're starting to stick the silver birch bark inside there and pack it nice and tightly. Put a hole in the base of the tin for the tar to run through into a collecting tin below. Now we're going to continue packing this. I've been collecting this while we've been out and about walking with the boys from the various areas with the silver birch. Now we want to get this tin nice and tightly packed because for quite a bit of birch bark you don't really get a whole lot of tar. In an ideal world of course we'd be rolling it up and cramming it in there. Now we're trying to get as much of the outer bark as possible in the tin without the inner bark which contains a lot more of the moisture because that way we get a lot more value, a lot more tar for our minute, for our burn. Now in this particular setup we're using three bean tins. We're using one buried into the ground itself with the second tin above it partially buried just up to the mark. We're going to bury it up to about that mark where my finger is on the picture there. The idea being that the, the bottom most tin will be completely buried with this tin in the middle buried up to that finger mark just the approximately half an inch above the base that way the seal between the two tins isn't allowing any air in because what we don't want to happen is to extract the tar and then that to catch fire itself We're really cramming it in there putting a bit of pressure on get as much in as we can now it's not going to run as smoothly as we would like but we really do need the extra content in there now using the comedy and trenching tool from the previous video we're going to now make a hole so we can bury that first can in there and these are just three standard bean cans they are left over from making a five peel bean chilli the other day there's nothing special involved there just starting to build the fire up a little bit and there's the the receiving can in the base of the hole ready now with the the middle can in place the one with the birch bark in and the earth packed around to form that seal to allow the burn to happen and us to collect that birch bark. And as we can see we're starting to prepare the can that goes in the top. Now initially as we can see from this footage I put some water in the top can and then started to fill it with stone. This was to give it an extra bit of weight and to make sure that seal was that little bit better. However, We found out in various experiments and and kicking this idea around that we didn't actually need the water in there in fact it was counterproductive because on the first attempt of this experiment we didn't get a successful burn because the water kept boiling overflowing and cooling down around the burn tin Chamomile behind Tyson's legs there, just on the right hand side of frame as we're looking at it. Now we're placing the filled tin with the, the extra weight to form that seal on top of the tin with the bark in. So we've now got the three tins all in place and we've built the fire up a little bit and just see it above the tins there. What we want to do is start to move the fire around these tins in a minute to make a, a complete burn around and in order to boil that birch bark tar. We, we want to heat the bark so that we then extract the tar and it runs down into the tin below. We're starting to move the fire around the tins, get that burn going and get that tar heated from that bark. If you're enjoying the content so far, please do hit that like button because every press we get really does help us out. Thanks very much. We're still on to get the fire in place, start to build it up around the cans. This is a, a bit of an experiment from my point of view as well, never having extracted birch bark like this. I want to see if we can maintain that seal enough to prevent the burn. Got the lads getting into view now, they're Connor and Tyson. They're getting some extra wood on to get that fire going, get the heat source moving. Passing me that comedy shovel that we disparaged in the other kit review the other week. It's good enough for moving embers about and doing the odd little hole. But I really wouldn't want to be trusting my life or latrine to it. Scooping the embers across from the original fire, getting things going in a good way. There's the lads blowing it, getting the fire going a bit more, a bit more life in it. Would have gone quite well on its own, but uh, you know what lads are like, they're loving it. Look at that glow getting on. 
Okay, so it's now the morning after, and we're going to see how this experiment works using the, the bean cans. We're going to take apart the stack, the top one with the stones in, just to hold it down and keep the the air out. We'll take that one away to start with, so we can get a good view of what remains of the birch bark. You can see it's gone to nothing. It's really just dust now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the, the comedy shovel from the other video and start moving some stuff around, from around, sorry. It's worth doing this quite carefully because if there is birch bark tar in the lower tin, we don't want it compromised with bits of dirt and muck and soil. So we will be able to make use of it. So we did leave it overnight for the fire to burn out has been a bit of rain overnight but hopefully there won't be too much fluid compromised because we had that ceiling can on top of it now I'm making sure we're well cleared out around the base and I'll take that top one off and there we go we have for the camera some birch bark tar now, there is quite a lot of clear fluid in there as well not too much of the inner but you can see the way it sticks to the side of the can so we did leave it overnight for the fire to burn out and there has been a bit of rain overnight but hopefully there won't be too much fluid compromised because we have that ceiling can on top of it for sure we're well cleared out around the base. And take that top one off, and there we go. So having taken down the stack now, this is what remains of the birch bark. You can see it's all the fluids, all the, the resin has cooked out of that, leaving it just as powdery ash. Take it all out. Sometimes when you've done this, you will have a little bit left that you'll be able to reuse again. And here's quite sticky and tarry at the bottom we can see there is still some left in there so what I would do in doing this again I'd pack the tin full of the birch bark and then put that bit on top so all the excess in that would drain down through the other and hopefully come out through this hole at the bottom of the can we can see a little bit of residue just around the hole there maybe if I'd made this maybe if I'd given this can a little bit more of a belly this way we might have been able to, to get a little bit more of this resin out but not too much I don't think we've done bad on this occasion your boys. Wow. Birch bark tar, okay? You can use that medicinally in things like skin complaints. You can use it doing canoes. You can do it for wood preservation. If you've got a wooden handled tool like a knife or an axe, you can rub a bit of that into the wood and it preserves it. How's that, eh? <laughs> that doesn't smell like cheese, you weirdo. <laughs> All I'm going to do is use my fingers, dip it in. We can see it on the ends of my fingers. Rub it into the wooden handle of the axe. We'll see, it gives a nice lust there. I'm going to do another video about axe care later on. We're going to bring this, this is only a cheap little hatchet I've had for years, but we're going to bring this back into some kind of decent order. So this all goes towards that. Look at that, beautiful colour in there. Nice chocolatey brown. And all this does is feeds the wood, keeps it in good fettle. Good and all round. Put it back in the shed in a minute to dry. Leave it to soak in. Probably had, had a decade to the life of this handle. Not to mention it looks like a piece of equipment. A tool it's cared for. As all tools should be. We live in too much of a throwaway society these days. Wasting resources. Wasting provisions. 
now as an added bonus, every time we open that shed, you'll get that, that smell of traditionally treated woodwork. Just hitting your nostrils and almost putting yourself in the outdoors before you actually get out there, while you're still sorting the kit out. To me, you know, that's just another level of the experience. If you've enjoyed watching today's content as much as we've enjoyed making it, please do hit subscribe, press like, ring that bell for notifications and leave any comments below. We'll do our best to answer any questions that are posted within the first couple of days of posting. All the best for now and see you in the next video.